Dwayne Picard, very nice to meet you. The CEO of Mark Andy as of December last year, so quite new in the role, quite new to the industry, but an extensive CEO level, corporate level sort of background. Um, I'd like to start by asking you a bit about that professional background of yours. What did you study? What's your career look like? Which companies have you worked for uh, over the years? Sure, I think um, it's an interesting background. Um, the one thing I was telling someone at, someone at uh, dinner the other night, I said, you know, I feel like all the experiences I've had in my career have kind of led me to this opportunity here at Mark Andy. And I'm able to, uh, to take all those things that I've learned along the way and all those experiences and skills and, um, and even some of the people bringing them along as well. And, uh, but I started my career at uh, General Motors on the shop floor, maintaining machines, not unlike these machines. Um, electrical engineering degree and and uh, I went I went back to school and got my MBA and I, and I worked in the air conditioning industry for Carrier Corporation for about 10 years in various roles um, starting up new compressor plants doing some global technology transfer and things like that and then uh, I moved from uh, Carrier to Honeywell in their automotive business so I'm back now in automotive and uh, aftermarket parts. You may have heard of the Fram filter brand or the Autolite spark plug brand. Well, I ran Fram plants and then I managed both of those businesses during my career at Honeywell. And uh, we got bought by private equity and I've been in private equity uh, assignments ever since. A couple in aerospace, machining, and most recently in construction. And so this label industry is, is a really new thing to me. I'm excited about it. Um, you know, and, and uh, when I think about that background, you know, a lot of technical operations background, that is Mark, Andy, and Spades. Not only what we have to do in our factory, but what our customers have to be able to do in their plants to be productive and effective every day. So a lot of the things that I've learned along the way and have helped me in my career are absolutely relevant and, and being put in play at Mark, Andy. That's interesting. There must be a, a, obviously a certain amount of crossover with those kind of manufacturing sectors that you've, uh, that you've been in before. Um, obviously, still early days comparatively in the, in, in the industry. Um, what do you see as, as being similar to other manufacturing industries that you've been a part of? And, and is there anything that's slightly different? Yeah, I think, um, well, there, there's a lot of change in this industry. Um, you know, change in regards to consolidation, change in regards to regulation. Um, and I think there's even some vertical integration going on. And that it's, th those dynamics are pretty interesting and, and to figure out what's the right strategy is, is gonna be one of the things that we work really hard on figuring out. And um, our customers are gonna guide us in that journey, but you know, being really, uh, you know, in touch with these dynamics and understanding that the way we used to do business with um, when there were 2,500 converters and all independents or mostly independents, the business model to support that is much different than a group that has 20, 30, 40, or hundreds of plants around the world. So we have to adapt our model. And those are some of the things that, you know, we're, we're thinking about and starting to work on Operationally, um, you know, manufacturing is pretty similar. All the principles apply. Um, lean manufacturing, continuous improvement culture, getting people engaged every single day in helping move the business forward. And that's, that's about leadership, that's about education, training, and then follow up and follow through every single day with your workforce. Um, and I've been in a number of converter plants as well, and. And you, you see some that are incredibly sophisticated and some that have a lot of opportunities right there in front of them. And so I think, you know, to the extent we can even help some of our customers on that journey, that would be a place where we could, we could add some value, you know, over and above the equipment, the software, the service, and the, and the supplies that we do. You mentioned obviously the, the, the consolidation in the industry. It's comparatively newer on the converter side, there's been supplier consolidation going on for many, many years. It's really ramped up on the converter side in, in recent years. And as you say, there's a, a, 
you know, a huge range between big multinational corporations serving the global brands, um, you know, with, with operations all around the world compared to, you know, small family run businesses with a press or two. Um, but obviously that landscape is kind of changing and evolving quite quickly, particularly here in the United States. Um, what kind of pressure does that put on Mark Andy as a manufacturer, that, that changing profile of customer and that changing landscape? Yeah, I think um, it's, a, it's a fantastic question. I've, I've actually been in other industries where this consolidation really proposed some strategic questions. And I know at least in one of those companies, and I'm not gonna name them, but it was very much a de conscious decision to focus on the consolidators and to very much spend all time and energy, all brand work, um, all programs toward who we believe were gonna be the winners in the industry. And all of the mom and pops got left behind and they eventually found other brands and other products to support them. And when we realized that it was a little too late and we tried really hard to go back and, and win that credibility back. And, and that was our roots in that company. So you can take a guess on who you think that might've been. Interesting. But I, I have that perspective coming in and the answer is we need to do both, right? Small converters are not going away. People with one machine, two machines, growing to four or five machines. And at some point, either that, that business is gonna to transfer to the next generation in that family, or at some point they might, they might decide to bring in an investor and grow, add facilities. We are not gonna take our eye off of that core customer. And honestly, it's in our DNA. We know them, we've helped them, we design our products to support them and the expansion of their business. What we're adding to our capability is these groups need different things, right? Their level of optimization across facilities, um, trying to support their customers in different, more cost-effective um, and productive ways. And those are the things that we need to spend more time engaging, listening, and having them help us figure out what it is we need to be working on next to, for that next sm smart innovation. All right, the, I'm not, we are not gonna do innovation for the sake of innovation. It has to have a purpose. It has to solve issues for our customers or help them grow. And that's the big shift in what we're trying to do here. Okay, and I think if you, if you went out and talked to some big groups that might say, yeah, Mark Andy has to really kind of figure us out a little bit better. And that's what we're doing. And the small guys would say, don't leave us behind. So you've obviously been visiting lots of customers I since have. you- uh, across that spectrum. And yeah. so I was about to ask, is that, have you, you, every profile of Converter, have you, have you visited some very small customers as well as, uh, you know, uh, huge multinationals as well? Yeah, I have, I have. and. Um, it's, it's interesting because there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, there, there, there's very little standardization in this industry is what I found. Um, every shop got started a certain way. In a lot of cases, that initial book of business is still running someplace, maybe with the original equipment and it just runs and runs and runs and pays a lot of bills, and it's actually a big pride factor for those companies. <clears throat> when I look at the groups, depending on you know the consolidators that you're talking to, each has a slightly different strategy. In some cases, they're fully integrated ERP systems and, and they're running like multinational corporations. In other cases, they're actually leaving each of these entities to run and serve their customers, and they're getting a lot of back office synergies. And <clears throat> you don't know until you ask, and most are willing to share, and our intent is to really engage so we can understand, okay, <clears throat> we understand what's made you <clears throat> what's made you successful to this point. What is it you're thinking about over the next three to five years that we can help you with? And that's what we're trying to change that conversation. So is there a, uh, a difference in terms of these different profile of customers, what they're asking you when you go to visit them? Or, or what they're saying to you, or 
what their concerns are. Does it change much between you know the smaller company running a press or two uh, or a handful of presses compared to that kind of big multinational? Yeah, I think it does. It does. Um, and 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 it nothing is black and white, right? There's a lot of gray. <clears throat> I think you know the the smaller shops, the one location shops, um, they really need a consultative selling approach so that when they're looking at getting more productive, adding a new book of business, getting into a new application or a new segment of our of our print industry. Um, they need our salespeople to look at what are, what's their starting point and to be able to say, OK, so this is what you want to do. You could do it this way by adapting your existing machines or you could do it this way with a new piece of hardware that will satisfy those needs or a couple things in between and help them evaluate, you know, even evaluate the ROI on those changes of, and investments. I think that's the, that's probably a little unique to the smaller converters <clears throat> because in a group, a lot of times they've acquired a dozen or more companies and they have got the, a lot of that expertise in house. And in that scenario, it's more about the larger groups who've acquired, you know, 10, 12, 20, 30, in some cases, companies they've developed and acquire that expertise in-house. So what they need is a little different. They, they understand their installed base of equipment. They know how to do and take advantage of a lot of the modularity and what we can retrofit and whatnot. What they want to know is, okay, what technology is next? What, what's down the road? What can we count on? And then ideally share what they're thinking so that we can modify our product development plans and our technology roadmaps to better support them. So I think that's the, the difference on those two groups. What do you see as the specific strengths that you bring to the role? You know, given your kind of background in, in, in uh, in different areas, different roles over the years, are there specific um, specific qualities that you feel that you bring to the table as a CEO of, of of any company? I think I rely pretty heavily on my technical background and my operations experience. That's kind of my go-to. Um, <clears throat> I think on the uh, on the prioritization of what our company works on. I always start with the customer. So it's very much a customer focus. And I mean, it, it sounds easy, it sounds cliche, but if you're, not, if you're not spending your time and money in your engineering, in your manufacturing, in your service, across your company, focusing on how you help your customers make more money, that's the headline, but Making more money is easy to say, but sometimes it's productivity. Sometimes it's new business. Sometimes it's a new application. And so you really have to listen and then, you know, distill that information into, okay, so here's some things we can go do. And I think the best example of that so far is that our initial <clears throat> research with customers and conversations with customers the last six months has led us to the need to implement a program called Mark Andy 360. And uh, Mark Andy 360 is about advanced customer support. Because what we heard from our customers was this digital, this digital technology is really difficult. It's a new way of thinking. It is truly a transformation in our business. And we need your help. And so you know, most of these, these converters have got 10, 20, 30 years of experience in Flexo, right? And we're, you know, we kind of own Flexo, especially in North America. And <clears throat> we even got to the point where a lot of the support was no longer required, you're right? We would build the machine, we'd do the runoff or the purchase acceptance run, we'd install it, train, and be done. But with digital, I mean, you can't optimize this machine unless you're doing all of the work up front to prepare those files and to optimize those files. And then to be able to run a digital machine, which is quite frankly, not as reliable as the Flexo 
technology that everybody's used to, so you got to get used to different levels of maintenance and whatnot. And and then finishing, right? I mean, the finishing in this arena is also becoming more and more challenging. Quality inspection, zero defects. Um, so this new group, this advanced customer support group was really a response to what we heard in, <clears throat> we need more help throughout this value stream from software and file preparation right through finishing to our customers. And in some cases, even understanding the attributes of this digital equipment so we can sell it and, and capture some of the value we're providing from, our, from their customers and teaching them how to do that. And so those are the things that Steve Ludke, industry veteran we brought in, is going to lead. And the great news is that expertise exists within Mark Andy. It's all over the world. Steve has access to all of those resources to bring them to bear to help solve those problems and to help, most importantly, help our customers optimize and streamline their operations. When you arrived uh, at Mark Andy, was there something that you could quite quickly see wasn't quite right, given that your your previous background, that you something you came in and thought, you know what, there's a there's an easy win here. I, I'm not quite sure about that. You know, let's let's change this. Yeah, I, I, and it was no secret. I, I kind of knew it coming in. Um, <clears throat> Mark Andy had evolved to a company that was very much running in silos, and. Um, that has good things and bad things to it. The good things are probably around financial profitability and the bad things are all around customers and helping your employees serve customers. So I have spent a lot of time breaking down those silos and getting Mark Andy to operate as one company. And we're not done. We have more work to do. Um, we, have, we have things going on in the background right now that we'll announce probably later this year or early next year that'll make us even more one company to our customers. So, so what does that look like sort of practically? Is that, is that about communication? Is that about cohesive strategy? How do you foster that kind of collaboration? If you think about it at just within a sales level, um, you know, we, we kind of have a digital sales force, a flexo sales force, a, a retrofit and rebuild sales force, and a finishing sales force. Okay, so our customers, depending on what they need, are calling different people, okay? And we do the best we can with trying to make sure that everybody gets brought to the table. But it's really difficult to do true consultative selling when you go to market that way. All right, so we're working on that one. Is that something that will shift in terms of it will the, absolutely the sales shift. strategy? Yeah, yeah um, but when you kind of back up to even things like parts and service and supplies that we provide our customers, you know, what? when you operate those functions within silos, they all try to optimize within, and it you just don't have the level of teamwork that you need to have to really support your customers. So, I mean, fundamentally, those are things we're, we've already combined our parts and our supplies business, okay? We're working on the next step with our service business. Um, so now we're thinking about it in terms of, okay, there's this front end of the business where we do software and equipment and finishing. And then there's post-sales support, which is all about service, parts, supplies. And then our umbrella is Mark Andy 360. So that's it's kind of the vision for how we're moving forward and how we're going to break down those silos in the company. Are there any other, other aspects to the sort of strategy that you're looking to implement over the next, over the coming years, um, are focusing on breaking down those silos, shift maybe in sales strategy, communication, are there other aspects of, um, of, of strategy that you see that needs to be implemented from your, from your perspective? There are, um, <clears throat> there's a number of things really. Um, we haven't been that sophisticated in managing our supply chain. We now have in place a chief operating officer, just started about two months ago, Damian Morgan. Brought him in from other industries. Um, 
and he's responsible for all of our operations. So our manufacturing in Chesterfield, our distribution centers in St. Louis and in the UK, um, and all of our supply chain and logistics functions across the business. And that is really, that move is focused on operating excellence in the company, right? We can't support our customers around the globe if we're not operating at the highest level of performance internally in our company. So that is a big shift. And that is driving a lot of breaking down silos, all right? Because historically, each of those areas have kind of been, each of those operations have been within those various silos within the company. So I, I, I can't stress that enough. We've also um, changed our company by bringing together, we named Scott Warhover our chief technology officer. It's going back about three months now we made that change. Scott is responsible for all R&D, all sales support, all service support, and we added to his plate uh, product line management. So we're not gonna have a team over here doing, oh, here's what we should go invent next and, and then throw it over the wall to the technology guys. That's now all part of one organization working together and to make sure that you know we're always focused on what the customers need us to do. So those are two fundamental shifts in the company that I think will help carry us forward and help support continue to support our small customers and do a better job of supporting our larger customers. So um, some, some quite a few external hires then into key positions. Was there a feeling that external expertise was, was, was necessary in order to bring in sort of best practice from, from, from other parts of the, from other business sectors? Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, great, it's a great point. Um, so of the, of the folks that report to me, um, <clears throat> our head of Europe, Europe and rest of world, Tom Cavalco, industry veteran. It, it, he's, he's one of the best in the industry. So he's from within. Dave Telkin, who um, he heads up our service, our support, aftermarket support, parts and supplies business. He's a 30 year Mark Andre veteran. And so from within, Scott Warhover, He's been with Mark Andy over 10 years, was the head of technology. We've elevated him to chief technology officer. Um, so we have absolutely uh, promoted a lot of folks from within the company. And I've brought in some key people to help us on the marketing side. We have a, uh, uh, a chief marketing officer in the business, Andrea Richardson. I mentioned Damien, Chief Operating Officer, and we have a new Chief Financial Officer in the business. And um, the, 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 the finance change was really the prior CFO left um, of his own volition before I got here. And we had an interim when I got here, so it was just a matter of having to kind of fill that position. But each of those functional areas in the business now has key initiatives that they're driving to improve. So whether they're seasoned Mark Andy veterans, or whether they're coming in with fresh eyes, learning the industry, but bringing um, you know, other skills to the table. To me, it's about getting the right people in the right roles, and, uh, and they will help lead. Mark Andy has a tremendous amount of talent and expertise, and a bunch of people who just live and breathe this industry. And uh, we, need to, we need to lead and harness and continue to motivate and, and, uh, and, and drive the organization, organization forward and make sure that we're always focused on our customers because when they grow, we grow. So our job is to help them grow. Is there anything that uh, you see that the label industry isn't talking about or looking at or, or doesn't do well? Not specifically Mark Andy, but the wider sector that you coming from, from, from different backgrounds uh, look at and think, that seems to be a bit strange to me. That's a tough one um, because there's a lot of <clears throat> there's a lot of sophistication in these larger groups. I mean, they're running like multinational, the best multinational companies I've ever been a part of in my career. So I don't I don't see a gap there. I see an evolution for sure toward you know 
um, maybe more functional excellence and various companies and things like that. But I, I do believe it's evolutionary and it's about what are the priorities of those groups. I, I think there's a real opportunity though for us to make sure that the smaller companies also have access to that level of thinking and expertise as it relates to maybe lean manufacturing or whatever to help optimize. And again, we're trying to get at that with, with this Mark Andy 360. Um, I'm just thinking if there's if there's anything else that's in the back of my mind about about the industry. I think the one thing that is eye-opening to me is that it feels like, just based on limited knowledge and conversations, that <clears throat> regulations in Europe are 10 years ahead of the United States. And we need to make sure that we understand what's going to stick and what's going to come to this continent and to help our customers with that transition. It's shocking though, the conversations that are happening with our sales team and our customers in Europe that are not yet or just barely starting to happen. What kind of areas of regulation are we talking about? Sustainability, for All example? All about sustainability and different ways to sustain. I mean, talking about traceability from raw material to finished goods in, in, a, in, a, in a waste field. You know, I, it's mind boggling to think about how you might even try to start to do that. And then what technology is gonna facilitate that change? And then how can we be a part of that? How can we help our customers on that journey? What does a, 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 a day in the life um, of, of the Mark Andy CEO look like? Yeah, what? well, you know, the, the first six months are different than the next six months, and those are different from the next six months, but, <clears throat> Looking backwards on how I've spent my time, it was all about the first three months. Let me understand Mark Andy, let me understand our processes. Let's make sure that we've got things in place to manage the business day to day so that we, we as a leadership team are working on the right things to support our customers day in and day out. And it's just the basics, the fundamentals, right? And we had to put a bunch of those things in place. And then I like to put in place an operating system so that Everybody understands, you know, what we do every day, what we do every week, what we do every month, what we do every quarter as a leadership team and, and, and how we really challenge ourselves to, you know, look backwards once a quarter and say, okay, what did we do really well? Let's celebrate. What do we not do so well and what do we need to do differently going forward? And most importantly, what are our priorities for the next 90 days? So I try and run the business on these 90 day intervals and that really helps us keep a very strong, rapid pace of change in, in the company. Um, so those are, that's kind of how the, the, the first few months looked. Um, the next few months were all about getting out with customers, listening, understanding. I'd say this area I'm in right now is about, let me understand this industry better. Great opportunity at this trade show, great opportunity at TLMI at the end of the month. And I'm looking forward to meeting more and more of the people in this industry um, that have, that have um, you know, created just an, an incredible, an incredible place, dynamic, um, almost family-oriented, relationship-based industry. And uh, to me, that's really refreshing. You know, I, I've worked in automotive, I've worked in aerospace. And, you know, they've gotten a long, long ways away from people and relationships. And it's really refreshing now, having done about eight years in construction where it's all about relationships and then bringing that here to Mark Andy where, oh my God, it, it couldn't be a more relationship driven industry. It really matters. Word of mouth is king. Your word really if, if you don't live up to your word, you really have nothing in this space. And recognize that if there's an issue, you better take care of it. You better follow up and follow through because eventually everyone's going to know about it. So, you know, and I don't, I don't look at that as a bad thing. I look at it as a great thing. And, and I've always tried to tell our engineers, tell our manufacturing folks that I, I want to work really hard with our absolute toughest customers 
because those are the customers that are going to make us better and take our game up. And I think that approach is going to serve us pretty well. Um, and there's a lot of really sophisticated, um, tough-minded customers in this industry that require a lot. And, and it's only going to make us better. So I'm excited about that whole, and that what whole about, approach And uh, what about when the working day ends? Uh, what, do you, uh, what do you do to get away from it all? What's yeah, family so life Yeah, so my wife like? and I are foodies, you know. We love to find good restaurants and, and, and good wine to drink. And, uh, you know, we do a little bit of boating. And uh, we, have, we have four children that are in... Uh, they're in kind of launch phase. We're in that 19 through 26 age range. So one's launched, two are in college, and one is getting ready to figure out what his next journey is. So a lot of family time doing. What yeah. kind of advice do you give? Well, actually, I suppose your children are sort of that kind of age profile, young professionals or students or people starting out, deciding what they want to do. What, what advice do you give to someone who, who, who thinks, I want to be a CEO of a big company one day. My approach <clears throat> with anyone I'm giving advice to who's just trying to figure out what they want to do is follow your passion. Don't, don't chase money. Don't chase something that someone tells you you should go do. Try a bunch of things and figure out what makes you tick, what makes it, you know, what gets you up in the morning, right? And try and figure out how to use that in your career. Um, I mentioned at the beginning that you know, a lot of things have kind of led me to this this assignment, this opportunity, and and I could be not I could not be more pleased to have landed at Mark Andy, with great ownership team who supports us, a great organization, an industry that's got a lot of dynamics that are interesting and fun, and and quite frankly, I think Mark Andy is well positioned to really do well, um, to bring our heritage into the future with some really smart go forward thinking and flawless execution. So, and that's what gets me up in the morning. I mean, that's, that's also what I go to bed sleeping, thinking about when I go to sleep too, which I get reminded of is not always the best way to be present, but we're always working on something, right? Sure. <laughs> Dwayne Picard, CEO of Mark Andy. Thank you very much indeed for talking to Inkish TV. Thank you. I really appreciate the Thank opportunity. You.